And in Mark chapter 16, verse uh, 15, and here's what it says. It says, then he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. I'm going to talk to you today about how do I share my faith with other people? How do I share my faith with other people? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the spirit of revelation. Give our minds illumination that we would experience transformation. God, I pray you give us a mind to perceive and a heart to receive all that you have. And I ask that after this message, we will never, never, never be the same in Jesus' name. And all the people that came on Wednesday night because you love Jesus say amen. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. If you don't have a message outline, our ushers would be more than happy to give you a message outline. We've been in this series. I kicked it off. This past Sunday on, you asked for it. And really, it's a series about questions that you have that you wanted us to answer. And we started off, and I kicked it off on Sunday, how to handle stress. But today, I want to talk to you about really a question that a lot of you have asked, and that is, how do I share my faith? How do I share the God that I serve with other people? The Bible says that we are commissioned to go into the world and make disciples. Now, if, if Jesus would have thought that you and I wouldn't survive in the world or in some sense be overcome in the world, then he would have never commissioned us to go into the world. And so we need to understand that our mission field is not in church. It's our equipping place. When we come to church, we get equipped. When we come to church, we get inspired. When we come to church, we grow. We get planted. We learn more about God. And the more we learn about God, the more we learn about ourselves. And so I come to church because I want to know God. I want to come to church because I want to build my faith. I want to grow my family. I want to, I want to, I, I want to be everything God wants me to be. But what good is it? that you can come to a place like this, be equipped, be inspired, only to go into the world and keep our mouth shut. It's important that you understand that God is doing a work in your life. Listen to me. God is doing a work in your life because publicly he wants to announce it to the world, look what I'm doing in their lives. And so you are this masterpiece that God has created, and you are this masterpiece that God is, is, is constantly molding you into everything he desired your life to be. Even though your life was broken, even though your life was hurt, even though your life had some pain, even though you've had some setbacks, even in your life, man, that, that, that man, you've, you've had some things happen in your life that you're not proud of. Listen, God wipes it all away, and he begins to grow your life. And you say, Pastor Ben, why does he choose to do that? It's because as God is growing your life, he has other people in mind that you're close to that he wants them to see the work that's going on in your life so they can be inspired for their life. And so your life is an inspiration to other people. Your life, listen, your life is, 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 is a hope to somebody that's out there that's looking for hope, that's sitting there and saying, man, look at my life. My life is worth nothing. We've all been there. Man, my life is broken. We've all been there. Man, my life is confused. We've all been there. Man, my life is all jacked up. We've been there. Man, people have dogged me out. We've all been there. Man, people have abandoned me. We've all been there. People know your story. Your friends know your story. Your family knows your story. And then all of a sudden, when they see a smile on your face, they see a post on Facebook about your faith and, and what God's doing in your life, all of a sudden, they start paying more attention to your life. And the reason why they're paying more attention to your life is because you're inspiring them. Because at, because at that moment, they are where you were. And so what the devil always wants to do is sit there and remind you, oh, well, you don't have it, man. You know what? You're not, you're not there yet, man. You're not. No, no, no. Listen, you may not be where you want to be, but at least you're on track to getting there. And so I'm going to bless God. I'm going to praise God. I'm going I'm to be excited about God, even though my life may not be where I want it to be, 
but I'm on the track to get there. Look what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5. The Bible says, so we are Christ's ambassadors. Now, I want, I want you to circle that word in your message notes. We are Christ's ambassadors ambassadors. Now, here's one thing you got to understand about an ambassador, and that an ambassador is not an elected official. It's the only person in government that is not elected by the people. So our ambassadors, listen, our ambassadors in the United States that are all over the world are not elected by the people, which, are, which is you and I, okay? An ambassador is hand-chosen by our president. He handpicks the, the ambassador to represent himself in other nations. So when Paul's writing to the church at Corinthian, is he saying, listen, you are Christ's ambassadors. Jesus Christ is the king. You are his representation here on earth. So every ambassador, their home is called an embassy. So, like Lisette and I, we were in London a few years ago, and we were walking down the street, and we saw all these different flags. And I, I, I was telling her, I said, hey, Lisette, those are all the embassies of the homes of these ambassadors of the nations. And so I go, you know, we, I, I ran across the street, and, you know, I walked up to the one that was Greece, and I walked up, and, you know, the, the guard standing right there, and, you know, I go, oh, I would love to to check this out. And, and the first thing he asked me is, you know, do you have your passport? I said, oh, no, I left it back at the hotel. He goes, oh, you would have to show me your passport and you would have to be a citizen in order for you to come in. And I go, oh, well, no, I'm from the United States. He goes, no, I can tell by your, by your, by your accent. I go, oh, no, you're the one that has an accent, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so, and so but, but if I went to the, to the United States one and I showed him my passport, I would have access to that place. Why? Because I'm a, I'm a citizen, even though I'm in a foreign country, as soon as I stepped into the embassy, I have now the citizenship and I now have the backing of my nation in another country. The Bible says you as Christians live in this world, but we're not of this world. And so the local church is the embassy for the ambassadors that God has placed which means that you are a target of the enemy anywhere outside the parameters of God's house. But as soon as you walk into the church, the devil has no access to come into this place because only people that can come are citizens of heaven. Come on, somebody, right? Which means that, listen, an ambassador, because he's hand-chosen by the king, it's going to get you excited, because he's hand-chosen by the king, is not responsible to take care of himself. That means that if I was an ambassador, let's say to Africa, representing the United States, I would have a card, and I would go to the store and buy my food, and the United States would have to pay for it. Because you're an ambassador, all heaven has chosen to back you up and pay for everything in your life. And so Paul's saying, Listen, you're an ambassador. This is, this is what you are. You've been sent here so that you can fulfill the commission that God has, the why in him choosing you for such a time as this. But your life is being led in front of people. This is why the Bible says, watch this. The, here's what the Bible says. The Bible says in, in, in the book of Colossians, look what it says. It says, live wisely. Now, now, it doesn't say live loosely. It doesn't say live foolishly. It says live wisely. Now, part of the problem with our culture today, especially my concern about the church today, is that the church is trying so hard to be culturally relevant that we, we don't even realize we're compromising ourselves from being biblically relevant. In other words, what, 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 what the old saints used to say is wrong, today we're trying to decide, is it right? And, and because, because, because 
the, the social world is going in one direction and the current is going there. And what we used to call wrong 20 years ago, they're trying to justify it and say it's right today. And so the church is trying to tippy toe on these issues because they're afraid to stand for what thus saith the Lord says. Now, here's the problem. The reason why today statistics are showing that the church is in a decline is because most people that come to church can't see the difference. Listen to me. You'll never be a difference maker without being different. Like, we all want to be a difference maker. But you can't be a difference maker and act like the people you're trying to reach. Come on, you got to be different. You got to set yourself apart, okay? Look what the Bible says. It says, live wisely. Watch this. Among those who are not what? Come on, who are not what? And make the most of every opportunity. So let your conversation be what? Come on, and what? So, man, if you're dogging the church... Come on, you're talking about Sister Susie and Brother Bobby, and you're having these conversations. Your conversation is ingracious, and the church won't be attractive. Because they're going to sit there and go, well, why do I want to go to your church? I mean, y'all talk about people, put everybody down, all this kind of stuff. No, no, no. We want to we wanna talk it up. Man, I love my church. Boy, they, they love people despite what you are, where you are. I mean, you can cut them off. Oh, but... But but I I I I'm not gonna go to you. I'm I'm I don't I don't I'm not gonna go to your church because man, look at I got all kinds of tattoos. All we got all kinds of folks with tattoos in our church. You can come as you are. Oh, I'm not gonna go to ch church, man, because the last church I went to, man, they just judged me. Oh no no no, you ain't gonna get judged at my church. What are you doing? You're having gracious talk, and when you're having gracious talk, all of a sudden, put that back up. It becomes attractive. Okay, when a church doesn't have gracious talk, it doesn't have attraction. It has subtraction. So people are like, man, I don't want to go to that place. Why don't you want to go to that place? Man, they treat me like, man, like, like I'm from Mars. And this is why I tell people all the time, man, and, 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 and listen to me. I'm, you know, I'm as old school as you get. I tell people all the time, don't, 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 do not, do not be fooled with the skinny jeans, okay? <laughs> I, and, I, and I tell you this, I rarely... I mean, if you tell me what are the new worship songs out there, the only reason why I know the new worship songs that are out there is because my wife plays them. I mean, my wife's a worship. I mean, that's every, I get all these new worship CDs from all the churches that, that send it to me, and I just pass it to my wife. She's like, you don't want this? I'm like, nah. You don't want to play it? Nah. I mean, but you go on my car? Boy, I got the old-time hymns, the gospel. I mean, I got Jimmy Swagger, I mean, you know, I got Jimmy Swagger hymns. I mean, I'll take, man, you want me to lead worship? I'll take you down a hymn path. <laughs> the songs, I, the songs I, I worship to, the songs I walk around in my house, as the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Nah, 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 nah. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Man, I was singing. I was, on the, I was on the treadmill yesterday singing, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly. I mean, I mean so I don't, I'm, I, don't, I, don't, I don't usually sing all the new songs because I'm old school. Yeah, you know, you don't know. And so, and so, and, and people get surprised because they look at me, they go, oh, but you're so hip. You're so, but my spirit, I mean, I just hang on to them hymns. We ought to sing some of them in the church, huh? Yeah, huh? Like, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, yeah, 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 no, no, I'm talking about that. Hey, ha. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh. First Peter says it like this. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks you about your hope as a believer, watch this. Here it is. Always be ready to what? 
Always be ready to explain it. That means that if God is working in my life, I got something to say. You know, I, you know you, you'll always hear me say things like, God is doing. Or, man, I, I feel like God is working. I always try to stay away from a finished work. God has done. No, because God is still doing. And so when you put yourself in a position of, I am learning, then you're putting yourself in a place where people all of a sudden start to relate to you. Because even though you may come from different areas and backgrounds, the one common denominator that we all have is brokenness and pain. I believe that the language of the future to reach a generation that is far from God is transparency. People, what, 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 what young people want to know, they don't want to know your information because you give it to them all the time. They're not even interested in your revelation. What they're interested in is tell me your journey. Tell me where you messed up. Tell me how you got yourself back up. Tell me how you picked yourself. How did you get past that situation? How do I share my faith with other people, Pastor? Number one, here it is. You got to learn how to connect with people. You got to learn how to connect with people. Here's what the Bible says. Watch this. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. It says, for the Son of Man, he came to what? Come on, he came to what? So, so listen, he understood that my life is a representation of heaven. Therefore, I'm going to look for opportunities for those who need it. So I've come to seek, I've come to save that which is lost. Now, I want to I want to I want to bring more of a an understanding to this story because this story will speak of what kind of God you serve and how we're to act when it comes to connecting with people. In Luke chapter 19, verse 1, here's what it says. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. Watch this. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. Here it is. He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. Now, a chief tax collector in that day was like, I mean, the worst of the worst. I mean, they don't care. They'd come knocking on the door, give me your money. If you don't have the money, I want everything else. And you'd sit there and plead with them. They wouldn't care. Just give me, give me, give me, because my name is Jimmy. That, that's, that's how they are, right? So they were, they were, I mean, they were the thought of, of the lowest totem, lowest at the totem pole. I mean, they were, they were horrible. Now watch this. Jesus sits there and connects with him. Now watch this. He says, he tried to get a look at Jesus. Now, I want you to see that. He tried to get a look at Jesus. My question is, is this. If this man was a religious man, why did he want to get a look at Jesus? Because who Jesus was was attractive, so therefore, I want to see it. I mean, all, all this afternoon, I was praying in my house going, Lord, let it be the cry of this valley that people say, I just want to see destiny. I, I just want to see the people at destiny. I just want, I want to get a glimpse at the people at destiny. Why? Because you're so attractive. Because God is doing such a work in your life that people just want to see what God is doing in your life. Just want to see what God's doing in your business. I mean, they're sitting there going, man, I've heard so much about your path. I've heard so much about your journey, man. I've heard so much about things that are happening in your life. How did you get this far? How did you get to this place? Why are you so happy? Why do you have so much joy? And people are just saying, I just want to see them. That should be the cry of our heart. That should be our aim that, man, God is doing such a work in our life that people just want to come and see what's happening at that place. Why are so many lives changing? Why on a Wednesday night is it packed out? What's happening there? And so watch this. This man wanted to see what Jesus did. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short like me to see over the crowd. Watch this. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree, a fig tree beside the road. Jesus was going to pass that way. And here's what it says. When Jesus came by, listen to me, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name, Zacchaeus. 
He said, quick, come down. Watch this. I must be a guest in your home today. There was something about Jesus that said, despite what others perceive you as, and despite how dirty the sin of your life has made you, it doesn't discriminate the fact that I don't want to be around you. You see, I'm going to tell you my experience when I got saved. I, I, I was, you know my story, I was locked up on a Monday, went to camp on a Friday, found Jesus, and I mean, got Jesus in my life that Friday night, radically saved that weekend, and Monday I was on fire for God, and, and he, here's it, and, 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 and again, I, I love my youth pastor, but, but here's exactly what he said. He said, Obed, here's what you have to do. You got to get rid of all your friends. So you got to get rid of all of them because they're no good to you right now. I said, okay, I, I understand that. And he goes, and you can never be their friends again. All the friends you got, you got to be, they got to be in the church because they, they got to share the same kind of faith you did. Now, I understand now what he was saying. It was confusing to me at that time. But for so long, the church has said, you got to be so against the world that you can't even have friends. When the Bible says Jesus was a friend of sinners. And then it's like the church became this whole, let's reach each other. So we're going to pray for each other. And then someone is a prophet, we're going to prophesy to each other. And then, you know, somebody has a word. I have a word for someone in the church. I mean, you know, why don't you prophesy to people on the streets to check to see if you're a real prophet? Well, I, I appreciate your praying for me, but pull over on the road and pray for somebody that has a sign out there that needs prayer in their life right now. And so my whole thing is that if we're afraid of befriending people, why are you at your job? Why did God open up the door for where you're at? Pastor Obed, you don't understand, man. Pray for me at my job because I just feel like everyone's against me. No, 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 no. It's not that they're against you. It's that you're so different, you don't fit in. But there's a reason why God has you there because you're the only hope that they can see. And so you got to stay there. Well, why do I got to stay there? Because eventually it's all going to turn around. Because the reason why they're looking at, the reason why they can, oh, look at you, you're just goody two-shoe. Where did they even get that thought from? Oh, look at you, you just kind of walk around like, like you, know, you, 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 you know, you Jesus person, you know, we're not good enough. Wow, where did, they, where did they get that from? What made them react that way? It's simple. They understand there's a distinction. There's a difference. See, because you're different, you're able to be a difference maker. And you don't even realize that these attacks are not coming because they don't like you. They're coming, they're coming up against you because the devil's trying to frustrate you to convince you to fit in with the people that you're really supposed to be separated by because you're their only hope right now. And it's always funny that they, will have, that, that they will privately come to you and go, I need to talk to you because I'm going through some stuff right now. And you're like, oh, I didn't think you liked me. But what made them come to you? Because obviously they saw something in your life that was attractive and they wanted that, but they were just publicly scared to admit it. And so you, we can't be afraid of the valley. We can't be afraid of India. We can't be afraid of Palm Springs. We can't be afraid of people like that. No, we've got the most powerful thing that will change this valley, and we got to go out there and make a difference in the lives of people. He's at work in your life. Jesus connected with people. The Bible goes on to say this. Watch this. It says, Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house with great excitement and joy. Watch this. But the people, watch this, the, the church folks were displeased. Oh, he has gone to be a guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. What a sad statement that we want to judge people without even knowing the intent that's in their in their own heart, it's like I've learned to mind my business. 
you know, it's like, it's like people will pray with you to buy a house, and then they hate on you when you get it. It's like, sister, I'm going to believe for you. I'm going to believe with you for a new car. And then you come rolling up in your car, and they like, check her out. She thinks she all that now. It's like, then you shouldn't have prayed with me then. But why is it? And we, this, we got to mature. Watch this. We got to mature. I'm going to show you this in Scripture. We got to mature to get to a place that don't hate on someone's favor. If God is favoring their life right now, celebrate them. Because the last, listen, you may be sitting there going, yeah, we've been wanting a house all this time, you know, and God gave them a house, didn't give me no house. I don't know why God gave them a house and not. No, no, no. I've learned to celebrate people. Because the last thing you want is to climb up a ladder to success and got no one holding it onto it on the bottom. I want to I wanna celebrate. I mean, man, when people, you know, people, I just bought me a brand new car. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm retweeting it, you know, re-Facebooking it, whatever you call it, right? And, oh, man, God just blessed me with a brand new purse. Girls be like showing off their purses. I'm like, let me retweet that, you know, all that kind of stuff. I do that because I want to celebrate. You ought to, you, you, you deserve it. The favor's on you. I don't know what you did to get it. I didn't know what type of seed you sowed. I don't know what kind of faith you had. I don't know what type of open doors opened up for you to get that. So who am I to sit there and say, oh, look what they got? Wow. I've learned to sit there and say, learn from someone like that. Wow. Man, what it, man, man. And, you know, I tell you all the time, I'm a blessed man. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. I'm a blessed man. Blessed. I don't have everything, but I'm blessed. And so you make no apologies to what God has for your life. You sit there and look what he did. Look, look at the people. They were, they were displeased. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord. Look what he said. I will give you half my wealth to the poor, Lord. And if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. What happens? Generosity always opens to sinners that come in contact with the loving God. And look goes on to say, watch this. Jesus responded, salvation has come to you, your home today. For this man has shown himself to be a sutron of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save those which was lost. So number one, we need to connect with people. Number two, watch this. Share my story with people. You need to share your story with people. Listen, here's what the Bible says. Watch this. Look what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see, watch this, your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Can I, can, I, can I share something with you? Don't be afraid to share with people. I'm not talking about Facebook. But don't be afraid to share with people some of the chapters in your life that you're broken. I think, I think the most important thing people can do is share the chapters in their life that they were broken, they were confused, they were messed up. And I think sometimes we, we try to hide that. Let, 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 let me show you the front cover. <laughs> Come on, we're like, let me show you the end of the book. It looks so good. More people will relate to your struggle than they will your accolades, your accomplishments. See, because your accolades and accomplishments, accomplishments don't mean anything to someone who has nothing. But your brokenness does because it meets them right where they are. And all of a sudden, now your accolades and now your accomplishments become an inspiration for them to take their next breath and say, I'm going to take my next step now. Because God, if you did it for them, you're going to do it for me as well. That's, that's, that's what we got to do. We got to know how to share your story. Listen, don't be afraid of what people will say about your story. Don't be ashamed about your story. Listen, every single movie that you had tears, oh, my God. Oh, it always looked in the middle. They were never going to make it. And you kind of know they were because you saw the trailer.
But if people don't know those moments, how are they ever going to relate to what God has for your life? Look at Acts 1.8 says this, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me where? Everywhere. In your business. Giving an opportunity. Share my faith. Man, I just see that you're, man, your business is doing a lot of work. Man, God must be, you know, you must be being blessed. Oh, man, my God is taking care of me. What an open door. Did it cost you anything to share that? Nothing. Well, all that was was just a little seed that you're just planting. See, friends, listen, number one, you got to connect with people. Number two, you got to share your story. Number three, watch them. Invite them to a place they can experience God. Invite them to a place where they can experience God. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says this. When I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was what? Crucified. So listen, Paul didn't sit there and say, oh, look at me, man. I'm... I'm knowledgeable in five different dialects, man. I was a, I'm, 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 I'm a top-notch scholar. No, no, he, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't come across people like that. I mean, I, I remember when people come to me and say, Obed, you need Jesus. Let me tell you what Romans chapter 5, verse 6 says, and Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. And oh, by the way, you know, you need to understand John 3, 16. And John 3, 6, you understand Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. And I'm just sitting there saying, bro, let me just tell you something, man. You could spit all those scriptures at me, man, brother. I'm just trying to make it past the next hour. People don't care how much you know. They just want to know how much you care. I mean, Pastor Obed, you know, I, I don't know how to share my faith because I don't know the Bible. Listen, you know your story. Share your story. Your story will bring the Bible to life for them. Because listen, what, what your story is, your story is a clear example that God is working in your life. You could try to throw all kinds of scriptures at people, and all that is is scriptures. But when you share what the scriptures have done in your life, 1 Corinthians 2 says this. I love what it says. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling, and my message and my preaching were very plain rather than using clever and persuasive speeches. And it goes on, watch this. I relied only on the power of what? Come on, on the power of what? I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Listen, God's going to bring opportunity for people who are seeking. And you are going to have the answer, listen, they're looking for. I love what Mark says about fighting for the only thing that God ever built. Look what it says. Jesus and his disciples left Galilee and went up to the villages near Caesarea Philippi. Watch this. As they were walking along, he asked them, watch this. I want you to circle this. Who do people say I am? I want you to circle that. Who do people say I am? And then watch this. Well, they replied, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Others say you are one of the other prophets. Watch this. Then he asked them, who do you say I am? Circle that. Who do you say I am? Peter replied, you are the Messiah. So notice the two questions he asked, what are others saying about me and what do you think about me? Watch this. What are others saying about me? What are you saying about me? I'm going to say it one more time. What are others saying about me? What are you saying about me? Jesus was very methodical when he sat there and asked that question because he was very intentional. What are people saying about me? Oh, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Who do you think I am? You know what's amazing about your life being an example and your life being on display and living wisely among people because God's doing a work in your life? Is that usually what others say who you are is not really who you are. And a lot of times, we've allowed the opinions of others to form an opinion about that person. My life is on display every day. If I asked this whole valley, who do you think I am? It would be amazing what people would say. Well, you know, you're a skinny jean guy. You, you like to wear new shoes all the time. I mean, I hear so many things, and I'm just like, 
really? That's me? And one of the most frustrating things about leadership is about how others have an opinion about you and don't even get it ever, don't even take the time to even get to know you. And you got to understand that as God is raising you up, and God is blessing your life, blessing your business, blessing your children, blessing your home. You got to realize you're going to be in the same position Jesus was. People are going to think you're something when you're really not that. Jesus wasn't Elijah. Jesus wasn't John the Baptist. Jesus was the Messiah. Okay? And so it's interesting. The one who had a revelation of him was the one who got to know him. That's why I tell you guys, listen to me. Hear me what I'm saying. I'm going to do a series very soon. It's actually in, in, the month of, uh, in the month of October. And I really feel the Lord told me this. And he says, I don't want you to preach on how to get successful. I want you to preach how to stay successful. Because you're going to learn how to manage your success. Because most people get there and don't know what to do. I want a great relationship. You worked hard to work on your life to get a great relationship, and then once you do, you blow it. Why? Because you never taught yourself how to manage a great relationship. So watch this. We got to realize people are going to call you all kinds of stuff. They're going to call me all kinds of stuff. But who do you say I am? Not with others, but who do you say I am? The same thing with you. What are others saying about you is usually going to be different what people who know you will say who you are. You got to realize, don't ever allow the opinions of others to shape the thoughts of somebody that you know. People come to me all the time, do you know what this person's doing? No, I don't. Well, you should. Tell me. And then they tell me, and my staff will tell you this, I'm notorious. Matter of fact, it just happened last week. I knew this one person had did something, and it was told to me. I saw the person, loved on them. Hey, buddy, how you doing, man? It was great. Da, da, da. Hey, man, give him a high five. How you doing? What I normally would do for two weeks. Finally, one of our pastors sat with him, shared with him, brought it to his attention, journeying with him. As soon as he was done, I was in my office just working. This person runs into my office jumps on my couch and puts his arms around me and go, you knew, huh? I said, yeah. He goes, but you didn't treat me no different. And I said, why would I? It's not who you are. I'm not going to treat you by your mistake. I'm going to treat you by who God called you to be. See, we, we got to get to that place. To understand that that's what God wants for our lives. Because we'll never reach people if we treat them by their mistake. Rather than treat them for what God sees in their life. Listen, as I close, this is the things we got to realize. Is people will see the church different than you. They'll see the church different than you. You could try to argue it to your blue in the face. They'll see it different than you. The second thing, you should always speak high about the church of Jesus Christ. Always. The third thing, watch this. People will try to compare the leaders with other ones. That's what they did with Jesus. Oh, you're John the Baptist. Oh, you're Elijah. No, no, no. I'm, I'm different. And then lastly, watch this. Stay planted or you'll get plucked. You want to know something? Psalms 92 as I close. Watch this. You want to know why? some of you are so easily persuaded is because you think you're planted, but really all you are is just in a pot. Okay, you want to know a pot? You want to know about a pot? It's very simple. A pot cannot grow its roots in the same garden as others are planted because you've decided I want to do this by myself. So you're a pot plant Christian. <laughs> How can you just get up and leave? Simple. 
because you're planted in a pot. How can you just get offended and not want to come and resolve it and say, well, I ain't going to church because you was in a pot. Why do you feel alone when you're coming to church? Maybe you're in a pot. Because you want to know what happens to people who want to plant themselves in a garden? They allow their roots to spread. And beneath the ground, the other trees, come here, Andrew. Come here, Pastor Brian and Randy, come up here real quick. We're all planted. <laughs> my man, like, I got, I, got my, I got my skinnies on right now. Watch this. They're planted, right? You want to know what happens when I'm planted with these guys? My roots begin to intertwine with them. And here's what happens. When I can't feed myself, their roots are so intertwined with myself, it begins to feed me. But see, that will never happen in your life if you want to live Christianity in a pot. And so my, my prayer for you is to decide today, listen, I'm going to get planted in a small group. I'm going to get planted in the house of God. And then I'm going to tell everybody about Jesus because that's what I've been called to do in Jesus' name. Come on, you receive that today? Amen. You receive it today? Come on, why don't you stand to our feet real quick? I want to get you out on time. I always plan on doing that. It's important, even though your kids don't got school. Oh, they do? Oh, my kid's been out for a week and a half. Amen. Lord, help us. Why don't our kids still got school? I want to pray for you today. Here's what I want to pray for you today about. I want to pray today. When you walked in, you were given cards. Everyone get your cards out. You probably stuck them in your purse, pocket, anything. I want to pray over these right now real quick. And here's why. Because every one of you knows somebody who has suffered this year. Every one of you knows someone that something bad has happened that they didn't deserve. And I'm going to ask God to anoint these cards so that you can find somebody, that person this week, and say, listen, I know what, what happened in your life and just want to be led to tell you that my pastor... This Sunday is going to be talking about it. I think you'll get the answers that you're looking for. I believe this Sunday, the altars will be jammed with people, listen, who just need the reassurance that things didn't happen because God punished them. Things happened because God is God, and we live in a sinful world. Sin has its way sometimes, but it does not eliminate the fact that God is God. And so we want to pray over these. And when you walk out this week, let's just, man, let's, let's, let's just be here Sunday. Man, let's give some invite cards. Come on, let's share our story with people. Come on, and let, 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 let's do it in all our campus, La Quinta, here, 10 o'clock. Let's just do it in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up these cards to you. Lord, we know these cards have a name on it. Father, we may not know who they are, but you do. And this week, these next few days, God, I just believe you're going to lead us in that way. You're going to lead us to those people, God, that we're going to get a chance to share our story. God, I thank you. You're going to give us a chance. Lord, we've had conversations with people. I pray that this, these next few days you'll bring people back up to our mind, that we've had conversations with, God, that something happened this year that, that kind of devastated their lives, God, and they're still kind of shaken up by it. Father, we just believe, Father, that, Lord, we've been equipped today to go out, Father, and make a difference in the lives of others. So we anoint these cards. We thank you that when they're placed in the hands of people, it just wouldn't be another invite. But, God, it would be a supernatural invitation from heaven. And, Lord, we believe, Father, that this coming Sunday, lives are going to be transformed. We're going to have, and we're going to have our questions answered, God. And we're going to walk out with an assurance, Lord, knowing that if you are for us, who could be against us, God? And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name.